Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my members, Silvio Duarte. Thank you for becoming a member again and supporting the channel. Members are given shout outs in my videos and you can easily become a member by clicking the join button. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to be solving an exponential equation. This is a homemade problem and you can easily make one of these by working backwards basically. So we have x to the power x equals 2 to the power 2048. Oh man, that's a really large number. Uh, and you can easily find how many digits it has using logs or otherwise. But anyways, this is a pretty large number and we're going to be solving for x without using a calculator. All right, I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first method. So the first method basically involves breaking down the exponent. But let's go ahead and write the 2048. Well, if you know that 2 to the 10th power is 1024, that will help you figure out 2048, which is 2 to the power 11. So I can write this as 2 to the power 2 to the power 11. Great. Now, I got to break down the 2 to the power 11 into two meaningful pieces. Let's see what that looks like. So, for example, I can do the following. x to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 times 2 to the 10th. And then write this as 2 to the 2nd to the power 2 to the 10th. Uh-oh, they're two different, right? This is not going to work. But notice that if you can make the base larger, then they're going to get closer, so on and so forth. Okay, let's keep doing this. So my next attempt is going to be like, how about 2 to the second power with 2 to the ninth? And then obviously this is going to give me 2 to the two to the second power, which can be written as 2 to the fourth power. Then we have to raise it 2 to the ninth power. Uh-oh, it's not going to work either. So, but notice that the base is getting larger, the exponent is getting smaller, they're getting closer. All right, let's try another one. And Actually, this one is going to work. Why? Because I want it to work, right? Okay, great. So here's what I'm going to do next. I try the first power, second power, and now, obviously, following the pattern, I'm going to try 2 to the 3rd and 2 to the 8th. And guess what happens? 2 to the 3rd equals 8. Wow, that's great, isn't it? Okay, this is what the key is. Okay, so let's go ahead and write it as x to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 to the 3rd, which is 2 to the 8th and then raise it to the power 2 to the 8th. Awesome. So this should work. And does this mean that x equals 2 to the 8th? Obviously, right? I mean, that's going to be at least one of the solutions. So we can safely say that x equals 2 to the 8th from here, which is 256 in this case, right? Okay, well, all the time. Great. So 256 is a solution, but are there any other solutions? So in other words, is... is f of x equals x to the power x, 1 to 1, right? I mean, why do we ask this question? Because uh, can there be more than um, 1x value for which this equation is true? And the answer is no. Even though this function is not 1 to 1, it is for certain values. And how do we graph it? I think we talked about this before. So x to the power x is kind of like, you know, a blank at 0. Well, some people say 0 to the power 0 is 1, but that's not 1. It's yeah, it's kind of 1, right? I mean, it can, you can make it anything pretty much. Anyways, so you're going to get a function like this, right? So it's increasing at a certain point. So you can go ahead and differentiate this, set it equal to 0, so on and so forth. And from there, you're going to notice, uh, I believe, uh, you're going to get 1 over e from um, that operation. And so if x, your x value is greater than 1 over e then uh, this function is going to be 1 to 1. Well, that's not actually true because, I should probably say this, uh, it should be 1. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, if x is between um, 0 and 1, you're going to get actually two hits. So that's not entirely true. But if x is greater than 1, uh, then you're going to get only one intersection point. And obviously, our answer is pretty large. The y value, by, by the way, at x equals 1, the y value is also going to be 1. That's a blank, um, well, that's not a blank point. Anyways, what am I talking about? Okay. All right, let's, uh, anyway, so you get the idea, hopefully. Uh, when x is greater than 1, then uh, you're going to get an increasing function, and you're only going to get one solution, and that is going to be 256. Okay, awesome. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. The second method uh, involves a different approach, slightly different approach. Since x to the power x is a power of 2, we're just assuming x is probably, and it's actually certainly, but anyways, a power of 2. Therefore, we can write it as x equals 2 to the power n. Isn't that awesome? Great. Okay, let's see how that's going to help us. Replace x with 2 to the power n everywhere, and then set it equal to this, obviously. So we're going to be solving. We're going to try to solve for n, but notice that uh, n is an integer here, and we want it to be actually a positive integer. You already know the answer, but anyway, let's just pretend we don't. Uh, n is a positive integer, and we're going to try to solve for n here, as opposed to solving for x directly. Okay. And this doesn't really... Uh, Ah, we manipulate it a little bit. Anyways, so now uh, using the power rules, whatever, we get the following, right? And then from here, we get a simple equation. Since the bases are equal, we can safely say that n times 2 to the power n is equal to 2048. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this function, but um, it doesn't look that way good uh, unless I kind of separate this. So let's go ahead and put the 2 to the power n on the other side. So write it as n equals 2048 divided by 2 to the power n. There are two motivations behind this. First of all, uh, we want to get an increasing and a decreasing function. The second motivation is I'm going to put the powers of 2 together, right? So now uh, notice that this is a decreasing function. That is an increasing function because that's just a straight line with um, positive slope. Therefore, they have to intersect at a single point. So hopefully we can find that, uh, and let's talk about how we find it. 2048 uh, is 2 to the 11th, so I can write it like this. And from here I get n equals 2 to the power 11 minus n. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. We assume that x is a power of 2. Now n turns out to be a power of 2. Why? Because n can be written as 2 to the power of something, and n is an integer, so this is uh, n is a power of 2. Okay, great. And if x, uh, well... I should probably say, um, yeah, n is a power of 2. Exactly. Okay, n is a power of 2. So, if n is a power of 2, then I can just uh, guess and check. I know some people don't like that, but there's probably better approaches. But I'm just going to plug in um, powers of 2 for n. Obviously, n, n equals uh, 1 is not going to work. And then uh, it's not going to work. n equals 2 is going to give me... Is going to give me 2 equals 2 to the power 11 minus 2, which is 9. Obviously, that's wrong. And n equals 4, which is the next power of 2, is going to give me uh, 4 equals 2 to the power 7. Again, that's not right. But if you uh, plug in n equals 8, you notice you get 8 equals 2 to the power 11 minus 8, which is 3. And this is absolutely correct. Therefore, n equals 8 is a solution. But remember, we're not looking for n, we're looking for x. Therefore, and what is the relationship between n and x? Let's see. Oh, we assume that x is equal to 2 to the power n. Uh-oh, what am I writing? So x is equal to 2 to the power n. And since n is equal to 8, x becomes 2 to the power 8. Therefore, x equals 256. Great, and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.